Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz guitarist Eduardo Mercury. He just released 2018's CD, Prelude to a Kiss. He was born in Brazil and has always been around music. He started playing the guitar at the age of 11, and in 2011 he released two albums and received a scholarship to attend the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston. Along with his works as a leader, he has worked with world-class musicians like Dave Douglas, Paquito de Riviera, Mark Walker, and many others. He talked about this and so much more, so please get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Eduardo, again, thank you for taking a minute out to talk with me on jazz. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. So let's go ahead and dive right in here. I want to ask you about your 2018 CD, Prelude to a Kiss. Talk to me about this project. How do you feel about it? Since a long time ago, I've been wanting to record kind of like a standards album, a trio, guitar trio standards. And so this was, uh, it, it just came true because it was my my master's final project, my master's degree. So I was hoping to, to blend some uh, Latin American music with the standards and try to bring a fresh uh, interpretation of those. So let's talk about the early part of your life. You were born in Brazil, and yes. your, con- your your contact with music was early on, and you began playing the guitar at 11. Talk to me, fill in the gaps here. How did you get so interested in music and, more specifically, jazz? Uh, my dad and my mom, they always listened to music. I, I would have, like, records playing at home, and we have being all surrounded by music. My dad would take me to... Symphony orchestras and stuff. I started out playing rock, of course, because people that play guitar, I guess, 99% plays rock. So I started out because my dad gave me a box set with uh, 10 albums from Red Zeppelin. You know, I heard it, and when I, was, I was like, wow, this is super cool, I need to play guitar. And then after that, I started taking lessons, and by the time I was 17 years old, I was already playing some gigs with rock bands and from some pop rock bands back in Brazil and then I, I got into the to my first undergrad degree which was in, in music education. And by the time I got into the college I was very uh exposed to Brazilian music, mostly shoto and, and samba. So then from that like the language, the harmonic language and melodic language that we use on those uh, music, that type of music, it's very similar to jazz. So and then I, I started out uh, learning about jazz, and you know, somebody, uh, a friend would show me, oh hey, check this out, this is a tune, and then I'll, I'll be exposed like that, you know. So it just happened very naturally, you know. What jazz musicians or albums did you listen to that really got hooked in you? I remember when I, I first discovered basically gypsy jazz. So I listened to Django, and I was like, I was obsessed with that. You know, I was checking out and trying to transcribe as much as I could the guitar player Django. And then some of the the classics like Wes Montgomery, you know, uh, Grant Green. Mostly guitar stuff, and then after or afterwards, I got into listening to some some of the Coltrane albums, like the early Coltrane stuff. And so I started out in a in a very probably the classic stuff, you know, like not not very side B or anything, more like the regular, like kind of blue, you know, like people would say like, hey, what 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 record should I get? And people would say, oh. Try to uh, listen to it kind, kind of blue, you know. It's just something that everybody knows is good. <laughs> Absolutely. So what was it like to come to the United States and go to the Berkeley College of Music and be around that kind of environment? That was amazing, actually. It was the best decision I have ever done because uh, Brazilian music is very rich in, that, in everything, but music education in Brazil, it's very... The quality is not as good as here in the United States. So when I got into Berkeley, also I I come from a town that is uh, Curitiba. It's the capital of a state, but it's not like the biggest. Town. It's not like São Paulo. So the level 
the musicianship in, uh, level in, in my town wasn't that high, you know. So when I got to Berkeley, it was kind of like, you know, you, you see the reality about yourself and how every, everybody plays. So it was very good to me because then I, I went to Berkeley and I was like, wow, people are very good. I have to work. <laughs> so it, it was very, very good because it was very inspiring, you know. You see very, like, people very talented. And you just work out, you know, try to try to get uh, as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and along with going to Berkeley, you play with a lot of really uh, established musicians like Dave Douglas and uh, Antonio Adolfo and Frank London, a lot of people. What do you learn from veterans? I was very lucky, and I, I think it's because, because of the fact that I was, that I did my first undergrad in Brazil, I, I came to the United States with a, uh, a huge, huge background in Brazilian music and Latin groups mostly. So that put me on a spot where people would call me to do to, to gigs. So when I when I got to to play with those, with everybody that was they had like a a career already going. I mean, I learned a lot of about. A lot of different stuff, you know, for example, with Paquito, I learned very much the import importance of knowing the tradition before trying to step out and do something uh, new or more avant-garde. And also, like, the showmanship, you know, how, how to how to lead a band and put a show together. That was very, like, with Dave Douglas as well, you know, so how to talk with, with the audience and... Because it's different when you when you when you're working with a singer, like that's their job. You never have to talk with anyone, you know. <laughs> but then, yeah. if you're doing instrumental music, you, you you kind of learn how to how to behave, how to be a leader in an instrumental setting, and how to interact with the audience. You know? you know, you're a long way from home. You're in the United States. You've had a pretty successful career. You're on your third album. You've traveled all over the place, played with a lot of people, well-educated. How do you feel about your career up to this point? I think it's growing. It's good. But, like, music is something that we never stop, you know. You can be always – I'm always practicing and trying to learn new stuff. And as well, I'm always trying to build up my career to, to a point there I can, you know, be doing more and more of my own things and less of sidemen type of work, you know. But it's it's I like it. I I, I feel like my my life is is being good. I cannot complain. It's always uh but I'm always on the lookout and pushing to to grow in the in my my career and as a person and as a musician. As a live performer, you have to admire the live shows that you've seen in your life. Talk to me about some live performances, jazz wise, that you've seen that really moved you. Wow, that's a good one. So when uh. This is, I mean, it's jazz, but it's Brazilian jazz. There's a duo, there's a guy called, uh, a, a mandolin player called Hamilton with Yolanda, and a guitar player called uh, Yamandu Costa, and they had a, a duo concert once, and that thing was amazing. So I remember that that is one of the best shows I've ever been, because it was a very, very small place, and, I mean, they just, had everybody was so connected, you know. The, the audience, every everyone, they were playing great. And more, uh, one of the jazz concerts that I've seen that was very cool, I saw was the the Danilo Perez trio, the Children of Light. That that and it was a concert that I, you know, like those guys they played some. This was here in Boston. They play some some stuff that I've never heard before, you know. Like it was it was mostly free jazz, but it was very very connected. The tri as a trio, they they were very uh, engaged, but one with each other, you know. So that was powerful. It was like, whoa, this that's the way to play trio, you know. But I, I feel like that came from years and years playing together. It's kind of hard to get. If you're not doing the same stuff with the, the 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 same people all the time, you know. Why do you love jazz? Mostly because of the freedom and because of the fact 
the improvisation part, you know, of it, I just, I feel like, I don't know, some, when you improvise, when you're not playing something that you've, you've played before, sometimes you can be better than you already are, you know, in a way. It's surprising for yourself, you know. Of course, you have to take chances and dig deep, but it, I feel like the best moment, musically speaking, that I've ever uh, witnessed, it was during the improvisation, you know. There's something magical that can happen, you know. You can have an idea and the drummer kind of have the same idea as you had. And then you guys go from there. It's, it's, it's just... I feel like the, the magical of the improvisation is part of it. I feel like that's, that's the, the best way to, for me. It's, it's something that catches me a lot. So everyone has a version of you, your family, your friends, your fans, but who do you think you are? Well, hard question. I think I'm just a guy from Brazil who loves music more than everything else and trying to get as good as I can on that, and hopefully what I do will please other people. I don't know how, how to explain it. I should probably check it out and maybe in 10 years talk to you again. <laughs> yeah, see, that's actually been one of my questions. If we talk in 10 years, what are you going to tell me happened? And you can do that. that, that that'll be a follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. That right there is an answer in itself between both of those that you threw out. So that, that's perfect, man. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, Eduardo, thank you for taking some time out to talk about the new album, to talk about your career, and thank you for the music, man. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Brazil, Boston, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Eduardo for his time, his music, and his stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Jazz.